Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a super high energy, fast paced intro to get you interested and hooked on this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you don't notice that I lost all my facial hair because I dressed up like Charlie Brown for my brother's costume party. All right, but seriously, welcome back. It has been a while. Uh, thank you so much. We're at 1600 subscribers. Hooray! That's awesome. Thanks to you guys. I am not studying for a certification right now because I am looking for a job. And maybe you're looking for a job too. And maybe you need some resume advice. Well, stay tuned because I might have something useful to say to you. Today I'm starting a series called How to Get People to Pay You to Do Things, AKA How to Get a Job, because that's what I need to do, and I tend to just make videos about whatever I'm doing in life. So, before it was certifications, if you need your Net Plus or Security Plus, go back and watch those videos. If you need to find a job, specifically if you need to know some tips on resume building and cover letter writing, watch this video, and I will give you some tips on cover letters at the end, but today I want to start with resumes. So when it comes to writing your resume, it's probably a daunting task. Maybe you have an old one that just says, I worked at McDonald's. Maybe you're not proud of your resume. You don't think you have enough experience on that. I will make another video about how to generate your own IT experience. What I am here to tell you is simpler is better and just the facts. Okay. So what I mean by that is check out my old resume. Okay. This one is cute. It's got color. It's got different size fonts. Nice, lively green color to it. Uh, name, little uh, personal slogan. Kind of, kind of weird. One one interview told me that this was kind of weird. So um, you'll see, I don't have that on the second resume. Uh, phone number, email address, LinkedIn profile, GitHub profile, and YouTube channel. Do I really want prospective employers watching my YouTube channel? That is questionable. Uh, do I really have anything that I'm proud of on my GitHub profile? I'm not a developer. I added a picture, a PNG of the A plus certification from CompTIA because I had one. And so I put it on there and I even included the profile of my try hack me account for which I chose a tiger. Um, yeah. So then we list education and certifications. We list about me, uh, lame little bio here. I never know what to write in these things. I'm not sure if it matters. And then experience, uh, based on my jobs in order of most recent to less recent. So at this point I had only had one IT job. Take a look at this, uh, network technician, and then try hack me and self-made experience. And before that, a whole bunch of unrelated stuff that has nothing to do with IT might give my employers some information about me, but really means nothing. This resume got me exactly zero jobs. I found a guy by the name of Tyler on LinkedIn, last name redacted. He gave me some advice and he said, look, man, take the pictures out black and white. I need quantifiable stats of things that you have done to help your company. And I need verifiable evidence of experience that shows that you know how to do the job that you're applying for. You might think this resume looks nice. Uh, you might think it's attractive. It's easy to read. There's lots of space. There's big font. There's beautiful colors, but no, we're doing away with all of that. And after going through this impromptu resume workshop through a stranger that I met on LinkedIn, who happens to be working in cybersecurity and taking his advice, I ended up with this not so pretty, no colors, no pictures, just the facts. We still got my name. We still got the contact. I did list my city and state because I had some people asking where are you located? Uh, I added my LinkedIn profile and my Credly address. I added the Credly address because Credly.com is a place where they can verify that you have in fact received all the certification that you're claiming on your resume. So I don't need a PNG of my A+. I can just link them to a place where they can verify that I did in fact receive my A+, Sec+, and Net+, right? It makes more sense. Just the facts, right? Uh, certification, date, degree, school, date. About me, still a lame bio, whatever, it's there. Uh, and then it goes straight into experience and I list, you know, location or company, location, date, and what did I do there? And this is one thing I just kind of want to focus in. I tried, I did my best to include numbers. You know, people want to know how many devices are you used to dealing with? So I put, you know, a thousand plus devices, 30 plus clients. That was at an MSP. Um, you know, I tried to give a quantifiable stat, like what difference did you make working there? 
Uh, PowerShell took initiative to automate multiple solutions, saving approximately 80 person hours or $3,000 per year. May not sound that amazing, but at least I'm giving them a number, right? Like, look, my skills in PowerShell could save you $3,000 every year. That's an argument for you paying me $3,000 extra or just for you hiring me over somebody else, right? And that's the goal here. We're trying to get people to give us money to do things. The best way to get people to give you money to do things is to be able to do things that they want and need you to do. Then they will be happy to give you money for that. So you have to convince them that you know how to do those things or that you could very quickly learn how to do those things. And um, I've mentioned it in other videos quite a bit. The number one thing people are looking for when you're getting into IT is experience. The number two thing, in my opinion, uh, is certifications. Certifications are the second best way to convince someone that you know how to do things because they are more standardized than uh, degrees. Unfortunately, degrees uh, could be worth a lot or could be worth a little depending on the school, depending how you applied yourself and what you actually learned. So degrees would be third, in my opinion. Uh, that's just my opinion, man. Let me know in the comments if you think something else. But uh, experience, certification, degrees. So in other words, if you're trying to get into IT very quickly, first thing you need to do is get a job. <laughs> Catch 22. I know. I did still include some of my previous roles, but I didn't add the responsibilities or anything like that underneath of here. People used to say like very strongly for some reason that your resume should only be one page because no one's going to read any more than that anyways. I'll be honest, I'm not convinced that anyone even reads the whole page, the whole one page. Um, but the other thing is resumes aren't s sent. You don't give, you don't hand someone a paper resume anymore. They're digital. So it's really not a big deal for them to scroll up and down your resume and figure out if they want to read it or not. You know, there's lots of p potential jobs, for example, that could have cross-related experience with some of these other positions that you may have held. So I think it's worth it in some cases to include those previous positions and maybe even highlight them a little more. Like say you wanted to be an IT instructor, it might be worth it to keep group tutor, you know, on your resume because you're like, look, I have experience instructing people in things and I have experience in IT, so I can instruct people in IT. This is a thing that I can do. Will you pay me for it? Hey guys, this is Vince from the future where the world is apparently freezing over. And if you're like me a couple years ago and you have no IT experience, go ahead and put whatever relevant experience you have, the most relevant job experience you have on your resume. If you have no job experience, Put class project on there. Put whatever you can that shows your employers that you're serious about IT, that you've done something to get your your um, hands on the equipment, that you've really learned some of the skills on your own, that you've pursued them. Don't be discouraged. Um, and if your resume looks anything like the first one, great job. You've gone ahead and you've put everything down on paper already. Now it's just some formatting and some, some aesthetics corrections. I think this might be a bad idea, but I'm going to go ahead and offer that if you guys would like me to look over your resume within the month of May in the year 2023, I want you to go ahead and share that to me on Google Docs at vincent.humble.pro at gmail.com. And I will take a look at it and I will give you some tips, give you some pointers. I'll try not to take too long to get back to you, but uh, shoot that over within the month of May, IT resumes only. Um, anyway, transition. All right. So that brings us to cover letters. Now, cover letters are something that I never wrote before because I was already exhausted from finishing my resume. And, you know, it, it's like, what do I put in a cover letter? Nobody writes letters anymore. What does this even mean? I have to write an individual one for every single company. It's a pain in the butt and I don't really want this job anyway. So whatever. I'm here to tell you it's super easy and you can put in as much work as you want and i would say put in the amount of effort that is proportional to how badly you want that job so if it is your dream job maybe actually write them an individual cover letter but if it's just another job like a mid-level and you're like i want this but i'm not super amazingly stoked about it but i just need a job so i'm applying then you know Give them a generic cover letter. And you know who's really good at writing generic cover letters? Chat GPT. Yeah, Chat GPT. Chat GPT is great at writing cover letters for you. This is one that was written by them. Basically, Chat GPT is awesome.
All right, and if you are one of my future potential employees, yes, this is how I wrote the cover letter for your application. So I'm literally gonna take my entire resume right here, copy this, boom, put it in ChatGPT. Look, I said, can you write me a cover letter? Here is the job posting, here is my resume. I just copy posted my entire resume. Here's a random job on Indeed for IT help desk support. Summary, essential duties, blah, 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 preferred qualifications, blah, blah, blah. We copy all that, we put it under, here is the job posting, and we hit enter, and something went wrong. Something something went wrong. Something went wrong. Boom, and ChatGPT writes you a cover letter. All right, so that is cover letters. Uh, it's that easy and it's it's not half bad and all you need to do to tailor this to each company is replace the name of the position right here boom and the name of the company everything in here is just based off of your experience and in your resume that you input into chat GPT so obviously you need to read over your version and make sure that it makes sense and there's nothing weird in there um, but but that's it that's that's the whole cover letter and I really don't know if anyone reads these, but having one might make you stand out. It gives the impression that you're willing to go that extra step. You're willing to put in a little more effort to get their attention. And yeah, maybe that effort was just put into copy pasting into chat GPT, but it's still more than what the next guy did, right? Right? That approach is ideal for mass spamming applications everywhere, like your first couple of jobs in IT. I would not recommend this for, you know, a very high level position, but if you're looking for a very high level position, you're probably not watching my video. So use that cover letter generically just to send out to everyone. It may make you stand out. Again, if you really want a job, put in a little extra time on the cover letter, maybe adapt the cover letter to what they're looking for by highlighting the experience that you do have that relates to the job. Don't lie. Do, do not lie. Okay. Lying is bad. And uh, you're just setting false expectations. You're setting yourself up for failure when you lie on your resume. Do not lie on your resume. Stay tuned because this is the beginning of a series called how to get people to pay you to do things. And I'm going to be releasing some more videos um, in terms of how to actually look for a job and interview advice and also creating your own IT experience. If you are looking for Net Plus and Security Plus certifications, I have a ton of videos on those. Go ahead and watch those. We can study together virtually. It's me from the past, but it's great. One more thing I just wanna shout out my man, my YouTube bro. I don't think he knows who I am. His name is Josh Matacor. He really inspired me a lot on my IT journey and gave me some direction in how to find my first IT job. Now I'm looking for my fourth IT job technically. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos and I'll see you in the next one.